Eating dairy doesn't agree with you. It's such a pain. And avoiding dairy is a pain. You might be worried that the alternatives have a high carbon footprint or are highly processed or have a long list of ingredients on the pack. Velvet Cloud might be able to ease that pain. Cow's milk has a protein called A1 casein in it and this is different to sheep's milk which has a protein called A2 casein and it's the protein in cow's milk that many people in Ireland are sensitive to. So it's very possible you can still have dairy but sheep's dairy. Velvet Cloud is produced on our family farm in County Mayo where our girls graze grass and clover pastures and then reward us with rich creamy milk. Our yogurt is made with just two ingredients fresh sheep's milk and live yogurt cultures. Look, I'm the farmer's wife and I'm naturally biased, so don't take my word for it. See what our customers say and see what the best chefs in Ireland are doing with it. One of the things that probably is, to me is one of the most important parts is the farmer's market. West Cork is incredibly um, affected by tourism. In summer, it's unbelievably busy down here. In winter, everybody hibernates. What happens is so many people will come here on holiday, eat the food down here. If we can provide that to a shop or a deli or a restaurant in Dublin, they may remember from their time down here, or, or maybe they've recommended our food to somebody that's up in Dublin. So it meant that we had this quite consistent, I suppose, amount of demand for our food all year round. My name is Fingal Ferguson. I'm from Gabine here in Skull in West Cork. Originally, it was always a dairy farm. A dairy farm with other things. There would have been pigs and chickens and all kinds of things always there. And mum started making cheese when I was about three. On a, on a pot in a stove in the Aga. And my dad, who's, who's a wonderful doer, from seeing the, the success of people wanting the cheese and liking the cheese, he built a little area on the farm for her to make more cheese. I'm the fifth generation on the farm. So on my father's side, they've always farmed here in West Cork probably the more, the more worldly side. Mum grew up in, in between Henley in, in, in England and in Spain. My parents met here in West Cork when she was over staying with her godfather and together a wonderful combination of two opposites attract. Dad has the, the honesty of the West Cork, the farming and the hard work. My mum kind of brought with her the, the, the cheese and, and this kind of Spanish connections. So I would have spent a lot of time going back and forth to Spain with my mum. Seeing how hard my parents have worked through my entire childhood, you'd think I'd probably be scared away rather than pulled in. If you, if you reap the rewards and the benefit of that hard work and, and people help you celebrate that and, and you feel part of that with other people, um, it's just the, the fuel in your engine. Gabin would then kind of go back to the old Irish name of Gabon like the little mouthful. There's a little part of the coast, the, the, the bay, called Crew Bay. And Crew Bay looks like somebody took a bite out of the coast. It doesn't really look like it, but on old school maps, I'm sure it did. Or Yeah, Gabin is, is, I suppose, just where we live. And, 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 and I think that was a wonderful coincidence. The late 70s, early 80s was when farmhouse cheeses all came together. And I suppose one of the beautiful things about the farmhouse cheese when it started off was just a group of people all working together. To go to the local deli in, in, in Skull, in, in Bantry, in, 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 in many places, and meet the owner who owned the place and ask, hey, listen, I'm making some cheese. Could you sell it? One of my jobs as a young kid was to drive our cheeses to a lovely guy called Chris Jepson, who was two villages away in Goleen. So he would be a guy who literally always had a whip or a lurcher behind him, a ferret in his pocket, grew his own vegetables, built his own boat to catch his fish, to smoke in a smoker he made himself. At one point he said he was going to retire from, the, from smoking and he gave us the blessing to build a smoker uh, in the same fashion. And then mum's family all based in the south of Spain. So we had this thing where we, um, I suppose we were going back and forth as kids a lot to Spain. So there was, you always had these big flavours, these fantastic relatives who were both kind of half English, half Spanish. And with that came the skills and, and the flavours and the food and the, the, the charisma and the whole sort of thing. So we started making some chorizo, started curing the bacons, making the hams, making a little bit um, to give to, to friends and, or sell to a, a local shop. So we built the first smokehouse. So it'll be somewhere where we could sort of take tours, teas and coffees, and here's some of the meats we cure here, and here's some of the cheese. But we changed our minds quite quickly, and actually almost halfway through the build, when we sort of realized there's actually a lot more to the, to the, 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 the food producing world. We realized that we weren't going to have a shop anymore on the farm, but there was the local farmer's markets. So we 
bought her table and her umbrella and started driving to farmers markets and started selling her bacons and her sausages and her hams and, and the salamis. And if you make food and you, you just wholesale it, you know, you sometimes miss that direct feedback from, from the customer. And I, I love those sort of elements. You also get truths and stuff from people. And there's nothing better than the truth of a child. I, I've always thought it was fantastic. If, if you put out samples and a kid eats it, then the kid comes back and keeps coming back and kind of eats them, you know. Or you have to, to take the blows as well, where a kid comes back and puts the half chewed bit of food back on the plate. You know, that's not a goer, <laughs> you know. And the, the market started to boom. So a lot of this is turning out, like I suppose, lucky timing, <laughs> you know, in, in, in the, the different evolutions. West Cork is an incredibly diverse area. There's a, there's a large number of cultures that have all come to make West Cork their home. So you had Germans and Americans and French and Irish and English and everybody all merging in one place. And somebody who left the city, if somebody was to sell their house in New York or London, could buy a small house in West Cork and a bit of land and still have some money left over. And this happened in several times and you just found yourself with this, this community of, of incredible and quite worldly and diverse people that made West Cork their home. And like most people would probably miss the foods from where they left, so they started to make them themselves. This led, during my childhood, to this great diversity of food producers. The salmon smokers, the, the organic growers, the beer makers, the bread bakers, the, 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 the craftsmen, the leather work, the, you know, the basket weaving. You know, you go to any of the farmers markets or any of the kind of the food shows and you meet these people who are doing things not because it was a logical business plan, but because it was something they loved to do. It was only a couple of years ago now that we, we decided to build the new smokehouse. And, um, and the reason for doing that was the salamis, which were sort of a back, back of the head sort when we first built, um, was actually becoming an integral part of our business. And there was never really a business plan, just the kind of case of impulse thoughts from as long as I can remember. We kind of realized that we had kind of created this, this circle. The farm had the milk, the milk made the cheese. The cheese was, was kind of going wonderfully well with the way we were, we were giving to our, our pigs. The pigs we were then sending off to the local slaughterhouse, the abattoir, we were getting them back. Um, we were curing the loins and making hams and then we started making the salamis. Combined with the herbs from my sister's garden, um, we had all of these, this, this range of products. There was eggs from the farm, there was the salads being grown and all these are going to the farmer's market. In some ways I feel everything has happened in baby steps. If you think about the, the, the nature of the business, you know, the, the cheeses, the salamis, the, the curing, the charcuterie, all of these things, they're actually, it's, it's a slow feedback. It's a, it's a slow food to, actually, to, to kind of make. You kind of be, take on that kind of way of thinking as well. There's no quick answer to anything. You have to wait a while, see how it responds, see how it goes. I was just very blessed to be the next generation from what my parents started and to be able to be part of that and bring something else to it. Um, so I think that they built it all up and I'm just kind of glad I haven't screwed it up. <laughs> I think the reward itself was the people in our lives. And I, I mean that sincerely. I mean, it's not trying to be too tacky. I mean, there are actually some really incredible people that we, we supply and they have fueled and inspired us to keep going. I mean, if. If we made food and dealt with horrible people and you, you wouldn't survive that through the times of no money and through the, the, the issues that you would reach, you know, you, you, you have to be rewarded by the people around you and, and work with and everything like that. And I think that's probably one of the main reasons that we've actually kept going and evolved and constantly adapted because of the inspiration and, and, and the wonderful people around us and, and that we work with and for and, and yeah. <laughs>